Payday 2 is just about ready to hit the Switch scene, but there has been a major hiccup across message boards and amongst the fan base. And we are here to discuss what's going on, everybody. It's Zach from Switch Force. Gabe is here, and I want to talk about this specific Payday 2 Switch incident, as well as what this means for future ports and, and how we feel about previous titles appearing on Switch and, and what developers slash publishers, I guess, owe that release. So first, Payday 2 is hitting Switch next week. Uh, and it has been anticipated by the fan base. It includes a brand new character, and there was some confusion on, on what version would hit Switch. So just to get the, the details out the way, uh, a lot of digging has been done. I'm not going to go into all the nitty-gritty. There's a great post from Sadly Useless on the Payday, the Heist Reddit that we'll link to that summarizes everything. But basically, this is a decently old version of the game. Uh, the exact comments from Starbreeze are, Payday 2 is releasing on Switch with content up to and including the Most Wanted update, which is equivalent to the content released through mid-2017 on PC. PS4 and Xbox One received one additional update after that, the Master Plan update, which released near the end of 2017. So Switch is one update behind other consoles, which are slightly behind PC. Now, people who have seen early leaked streams of the game argue that it's version 117, which seems to be even before mid-2017, but again, I don't I don't want to get into that. Basically, it is confirmed by players, fans, and now Starbreeze themselves that the Switch version of Payday 2 is nowhere near the current version on other platforms. And how do we feel about that is the question. It's a little bit strange because Payday isn't necessarily one of like the biggest games that you and I are personally excited for, although I do think we're excited to play it. Um, there should be parity, right? That's automatically where my mind jumps. Um, I do wish that whatever content is released on Switch is exactly what's available on the other platforms, uh, sans PC, because we do understand that PC is the main platform for Payday, and there are a ton of updates on there constantly. And the game's been around for you know such a long time. But if I'm being honest, if this is a version of Payday from like mid-2017, I'm honestly not that mad about it personally. I think that we'll get the update eventually for Switch. That there will be future uh, content coming to the Switch version. Um, they were, you know, able to say that. So I'm not that mad at it, especially because I'm not an experienced Payday player. If I was one, I I feel like this would be something that affects me a little bit more. But since I'm already going to be new to this, I don't necessarily think I'm going to miss any of that content. And I think that's a totally valid thought process like you said from a new player but overall I, I think it's worrisome and nerve-wracking to think that ports of of previously released games could come to switch with less than complete versions and for more money uh, they pointed out in this reddit thread that payday 2 on pc the ultimate edition is 45 dollars payday 2 on switch is 50 so we're paying five dollars more for a far earlier version of the game with less content. Now, I have no problem with reduced graphics, reduced frame rate, things of that sort that are unable to be accomplished on Switch. But when it comes to content, when it comes to missions, you know, we've got some some details here where they're saying that they're missing very specific heists that were like just basically cut off mid-event. Uh, it's it's very interesting, and, and by that I mean there was an event that added new heists, and some of those heists are in the game, and some are not. Not that they. You play halfway through an event and it stops. No, that's not the case. Uh, Starbreeze says, The reasoning for the Switch content, we're making continuous updates to a game that's turning five years old this year, and to get the game out in early 2018 on Switch meant that our team had to go with the content ported and available at the time of console submission. The PS4 and Xbox One versions are now almost up to par with PC content, and Switch is close behind those versions. There are future content updates planned for Switch as well. The promise of future updates. Do Should we pay for the for a promise game? Unfortunately, that's kind of what video games have become, right? Uh, you and I were just speaking about a different game, and I won't mention what game it is, but we've been playing it because we had like review code, and now it's in early access. You can go buy it, but we know it's not a super stable game. So you you are in fact paying for the promise that at some point this is going to be like a good experience. But we both but know this is not early access. No, it's not. But I'm just saying that that's something that happens a lot in video games now. You look at the two most popular games in video games right now: PUBG and Fortnite. PUBG is officially out now, but when that blew up, you were paying for a promise. 
Uh, Fortnite is free to play, so it's a little bit of, of a different case. But I'm just making the point that that's sort of what the video game industry is now. We've become accustomed to paying for things. Uh, Battlefront 2, right? That comes out. People are up in arms about loot boxes and all these other things. Like They pay for the game up front, and then all these fixes happen afterwards. That is something that's very common, and frankly, frankly I'm just used to it. Yeah, I think if Fortnite came to Switch, okay, or you know, another game in early access. Again, this is a polished, finished product that is not in early access. That they now are giving us a rewind the time version on Switch. I mean, again, imagine what? Okay, so so we get a. I mean, let's. It's hard because they're not technically out. I was going to use Fortnite as an example and say, what if we got a, a Fortnite version that was like the 1.0 and didn't have any of the tweaks? That would be frustrating. But I, I feel like this is even more egregious given the fact that Payday is not early access. So if you take any other game that's out and, and gets ported to Switch and it's lacking in content, it's it's missing. Uh, to me, that's a problem, especially if you're in no way trying to offer a budget price. In fact, they are charging more. And yes, I know cartridges cost and there are, there are different occurrences that require an uptick in price on you know any physical product and especially on switch but i think this is a very dangerous precedent and frankly i'm glad that there is so much fervor over it i don't know that we need to be angry and aggressive at all but i i think this is unfortunate and slightly unfair um you know they say that oh they to get it out in early 2018 i guess if that is the case all right i accept that I sure as heck hope that they do pump those content updates out quickly. There's concern on the Reddit thread that they will drop this and that you should not be expecting them to really uh, really follow through. I, I can't speak to that, but definitely it is a sentiment. Uh, they, they also just say it makes no sense that they would give an exclusive character which shows a furthering of content, and yet... The rest of the game is reduced, and there's interesting things of, like, the graphics have been updated. So, for example, they note that there are textures that were added in version 131, but the content or or the heist is not there. It's just a very strange amalgamation of Payday 2. And I'm going to go on record and say that I don't think this should be a thing. I, I get that it's sort of common practice now. Um, and, it, yeah, if you're going to bring... Fortnite, you're going to bring a game that still is an early access and, and want to say, hey, we got to get it up to speed on Switch. That's fine. <laughs> I do not think... Again, imagine if they release Hyrule Warriors on Switch and it's the first iteration of Hyrule Warriors from, from the initial launch. No one would be cool with that. That's not okay. Luckily, we're going to get a definitive edition that has all the DLC and all of the updates. If it wasn't that... Man, or or say Smash Brothers, right? Smash Bros. We get no, we don't, we get some of the DLC. So you're gonna give us uh, Bayonetta, but not Ryu, and you're gonna give us like that just doesn't work. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. It, it, it's not cool. Ideally, it would be feature complete as far as just the extra heist and whatever else. But there has to be a reason why it's not in there. I don't think Starbreeze is like maliciously just like, you know, over there like rubbing their hands saying, yeah, we can't wait to have the Switch version and not have all this stuff and <laughs> piss off these people. That's not what's happening. There's a reason why this stuff isn't ready. They couldn't get it ready. And the game is coming out now as opposed to, hey, wait and, you know, wait even more months so the game's even older when we release it in summer. Like, you know, like... It's yeah. it's a catch twenty two. You're gonna have to wait oh, a lot sure. longer to get all the features, or you get most of the game now with some some of these things missing. But those are coming later too. So it's just about how you look at it, I guess. And I think that's the danger of sort of message board mentality. Is the the thought here is that this is a result of laziness that because it's not a graphical thing, because it's not a performance thing, that it's just lazy and, and it very well could be that they just could not get it together for whatever reason we do not know the details we won't know the specificity of why but i am more inclined to believe in the honesty of these places i know a lot of people are more inclined to believe in sort of the 
not lack of honesty. Um, but if they say, hey, they did their best to get it together and to get it out early 2018, this is what they had to do. Maybe, you know, they were late to the, the party in terms of development on Switch. Maybe they, you know, had some hiccups along the way. Who knows what's going on internally within uh, the studio, within Overkill. I don't know. But I do very much see the sentiment of that on the surface, it appears to be a slap in the face, especially given the price. And I do believe that if it was the, the honest to God truth that they could not get the full version ready and they do plan on patching as they go, that's good and dandy, but with no set dates and no guarantees of when this will be up to snuff, I think that you should have taken that into account with the price and released this at $40 um, or, or parity with PC or below PC so you do not have that that nasty mark that your game is the this is now the most expensive version and, and not anywhere near the most full final complete version yeah let us know what you think in the comments down below how do you feel about the payday situation and uh more generally more broadly how do you feel about ports on switch and do they need to be the latest version i very much think they need to be the latest version unless it has to do with graphical updates those are that's something i'm willing to give on because I understand the Switch is not a PS4. But content, I think it has to be there, especially if you're going to charge full price, and extra especially if you're going to charge above full price. Let us know how you feel in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Make sure to subscribe to us here on YouTube. We'll be playing Payday 2 soon, and we can give you some hands-on impressions. In the meantime, follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash the Switch Force. Stay up to date on all the latest and greatest. We've got good stuff coming for the anniversary of this awesome console, and you'll want to be a part of it. So until that time, for myself and Gabe, thanks again. Switch Force, out.